Hello, athletes. Welcome and thank you for tuning into the Coach Katie Danger podcast recorded live from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm your host, Coach Katie Danger, U.S. Army veteran, fitness coach, and founder of Red H Nutrition. Here's a fact for you. 99% of us are not elite athletes. We're individuals from all backgrounds, juggling life's priorities, including jobs, our families, their needs, and trying to find time to take care of ourselves. Every single week when you tune in, I'll be discussing clear, concise, and actionable strategies you can use to get the most from your fitness, nutrition, and mindset so you can optimize your life without compromising your time. So athletes, settle in and get comfortable. I'm here to educate, inspire, empower, and entertain you to help you enjoy the unique fitness journey that you are on. Hey, hey again, athletes. It's Coach Katie Danger, and I'm coming at you live for episode number 53. And this week, I'm going to be sharing some wisdom on how you can supplement smarter and build muscle even faster. And to be clear, I'm talking about supplements that help build muscle that aren't protein. In fact, there are four, four that I'm going to be highlighting today that aren't protein that are going to help you build muscle faster. Now, listen, we all know that protein is the king of building muscle. You got to have it. And whether you are supplementing with additional protein to meet your macro needs daily or you're consuming whole foods to get the majority of your protein, it doesn't matter. You have to have protein if you want to build muscle. But there are supplements that aid in the protein synthesis process, as well as promote healthy muscle function. And that includes the contraction of the muscle. So today I'm going to open up your scope to additional supplements that are going to assist you with building muscle. And ultimately, you're going to be recovering faster and being able to do more intense sessions, intense training from workout to workout. But before we get serious here, before we get into the heart of the episode, I want to thank you guys for tuning into episode number 52 last week. I got a lot of kind words. I got a lot of messages, thank yous, and it just made me feel really, really good. 52 episodes is a milestone for a lot of podcasts, making it to a whole year of weekly episodes. It's not a small task, but ultimately it just takes people listening and giving me feedback. So thank you for the messages, but thank you for tuning in every week. And if you haven't already, I want to encourage you to tune into episode 52 if you haven't listened. Not only did I reveal an awesome training program that I'm going to chat about a little bit after the episode is over, but I also share a gift, a gift for redhnutrition.com, something you can use to take off a chunk of change off your next order from redhnutrition.com. So you got to listen to the whole episode to get the free gift, but that's, that's what's in episode number 52. So if you haven't listened yet, please go and listen to that episode. I want to explain a concept before I get into this episode. I want to explain a concept that I think is going to help with your information assimilation and what you get from this episode. And what I mean is everything is everything. You've probably heard this before being in CrossFit for so long. You know, we always talk about the little things are the big things. And it's so true when you're working out, you're getting results, you're staying on track. It's these small habits. It's these small little foundational approaches that really make up everything that we do and all of the results that we get. And these small things end up being the big things that drive the results that we want. And that can play in our favor or it can set us back. And our habits and routines either help us or they deter us. And in the military, we refer to some things as like the primary order effects, the first order of effects. And then there's the secondary order of effects. So what we would do is like, when we're talking about mission planning, there is one direct result that we wanna get from point A to point B, we wanna get there. But along the way, the things that we do, they can have secondary order of effects. So although we've got this main goal and result that we want, by doing certain things a certain way, we know that, you know, if we do things the right way, we're also going to have an impact on other areas. And if we do things the wrong way, sometimes they have unintended consequences that we may or may not have anticipated. The whole point of this is it's a broad concept where everything is everything. But for this podcast episode, I'm specifically talking about other nutrients that have secondary effects that that can play a big role in muscle building that you may not be paying attention to. Because I mentioned before, we all know about protein, but there's four other nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that you should know about. You can eat all the steak that you want. You can do all the right things. But if 90% of your other habits are counterproductive to the goal that you want, and we're talking about muscle building here, but this concept is very broad and can be applied a lot across a lot of other facets of your life. If you're doing 10% of the things right, but 90% wrong, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. You're wasting your time. So I like to present other ideas, expansions of foundational knowledge that can help you get better and faster results. I am the person, I've always been about 1% advantages. 
and one percent may be small it may not even be a blip on your radar right now like you know one percent big whoop right well the small things matter and over time the small things matter a lot more and they become the big things so that's why i'm always trying to give you these little pieces of information you can use to take your results to the next level right to add just a little bit of fuel to that fire you know what it looks like if you've got a burning pile of whatever and somebody throws gas or even takes a drop of gas and puts it on there Flames go up, things are ignited, and that's the spark that I wanna instill in you. Now, the four supplements I'm gonna share with you are definitely gonna help you with your muscle building goals on their own. On their own, you know, they do small little things. They may not make that big of a difference in your day to day approach, but when you add them together with a solid training program, consistency, adequate protein, nutrition intake, that's where the fuel and the fire, that's where that eruption comes from that you're looking for. And the first supplement that you need to be taking, and this order, is not necessarily in particular order of importance except this one. So when I start with number one, this is one of the most important supplements you can take in addition to protein for your muscle building goals. And the next three that I talk about, they're important, but creatine. Creatine is the first supplement you need to be taking for building muscle. And I actually have an entire episode dedicated to the benefits of creatine. It's episode number 16. So really this should come as no surprise to you that this is at the top of my list. I talk about creatine a lot. I use it daily in my nutrition. I even use it on rest days. So episode number 16, if you wanna dive in deeper to creatine and the science of it, hop on over to that one. But here's the gist of it. Creatine is the most well-researched, safe and effective supplement in all of the supplement industry. And creatine is a substance that is found naturally in muscle cells. It helps your muscles produce energy during heavy lifting or high intensity exercise. Taking creatine as a supplement is really popular among athletes and bodybuilders in order to gain muscle, enhance their strength, and improve exercise performance. Chemically speaking, it's really similar to a lot of other amino acids, and your body can actually produce it from the amino acids glycine and arginine. Now, several factors are going to affect your body's creatine stores, what naturally is occurring in your muscle. And that includes how much red meat you intake, how much exercise you do on a regular basis, the amount of muscle mass you have naturally, and then how much you're able to build. And then levels of hormones like testosterone and insulin growth factor one. Now, about 95% of your body's creatine is stored in muscles in the form of phosphocreatine. And the other 5% is found in your brain, kidneys, and liver. So the majority of creatine is in our muscles. Now, when you supplement, you increase the stores of phosphocreatine that's available. This is a form of stored energy in the cells. And if you've ever heard of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, you can see why creatine, because it enhances phospho or phosphocreatine uh, phosphate stores, having additional phosphate available helps with energy production, helps with ATP production. ATP is often called the body's energy currency. And simply put, when you have more ATP available, your body can perform better during exercise. You can do more work faster. Creatine also helps with several other cellular processes that lead to increased muscle mass, strength, and recovery. Now, when you put this all together and you supplement with creatine, this is what you're looking to benefit. You're gonna improve the workload that you're able to handle. You're gonna be able to increase the total volume and work in a single training session with helps with long-term muscle growth. The more stimulus, the more concentrated stimulus you can put on a muscle, the more it can grow. And the more that you can do that over and over again, increasing the volume and workload, obviously you're gonna have an increase in the muscle that you're able to build. You're gonna have an improvement in your cell signaling. This speeds up muscle growth and repair. When your body knows where to concentrate its efforts at, you're gonna get better results. You're going to also have an increase in the anabolic hormones like testosterone and insulin growth factor one. Now, do not worry. This is all natural. This works with your body's natural feedback loop. So supplement with creatine is not going to cause a positive test. It's not going to all of a sudden, ladies, if you take it, you're not going to grow, you know, a beard. You're not going to grow chest hair. This works naturally with your hormones that you already have in your body to improve and make those processes more efficient. Cell hydration. It is going to pull water into the cells and it promotes a, a volume in the muscle cells that promotes muscle growth. So don't confuse this with bloating or feeling too puffy. This is all about muscle growth. And it also reduces protein breakdown. So if you're able to reduce the amount of protein that is broken down and muscle that's broken down after exercise and during exercise, you can increase the anabolic nature in which your muscle grows. Look at what you get. You get a two-pronged approach to building muscle, reduce breakdown, improve muscle growth and hypertrophy, boom, you're able to build muscle faster. Now, my personal recommendation, and if you really Google best way to take creatine, I recommend five grams daily, even on rest days. Women, men, five grams daily, get at least five grams in. 
Now, if you're an intense athlete, maybe you're training twice a day, or maybe you're increasing the volume, 10 grams a day is sufficient to help with recovery and multiple training sessions. Now, creatine is best consumed on a daily basis. You really can't overdose on creatine because it will just get watered. The body simply won't be able to take in anymore, so it'll get flushed out and excreted through your urine. But creatine is said to be best taken with a sugary drink. And when I say sugar, I mean like natural sugar, OJ, apple juice, not necessarily like Kool-Aid with a bunch of just dumped sugar in there. Creatine absorbs better when insulin is present in the body. So if you introduce sugar, you get an insulin response. It's able to pull creatine into the cells more effectively. Hey, I know and you know that I talk a lot about using supplements on your fitness journey and reaching your full potential. How I believe they're integral pieces of the puzzle to reaching your best self and best fitness results. But do you know how supplements fit into your plan? Do you know what to take for your goals and how much of a supplement you should take? If you've ever had any of those questions and you want to know how supplements can work for you and your goals, go to yourfitnesssupplements.com and take the free, free, free three-point personalized supplement assessment. And with just a few questions, you'll have a complete personalized supplement recommendation in less than 60 seconds. You'll know more about how supplements fit into your fitness goals, what's safe, and what's effective and perfect for you. So type in yourfitnesssupplements.com in your internet browser, take the free assessment and get on the fast track to your best fitness results. So I hope I drove home how important creatine is in your body and to your goals of building muscle. So the next three that I'm gonna talk about, the next three nutrients that you should be considering, they're pretty common vitamins and minerals. I'm sure you've heard of them before. And if you're taking a multivitamin right now, you're probably already supplementing with them right now. So knowledge is power here. Pay attention, athletes. Let's dive in first to vitamin D. Vitamin D is affectionately referred to as the sunshine vitamin. And right now, if you're living in a northern state where it's snowy and cold, you're probably not getting a lot of vitamin D. So supplementing is really important. We know that vitamin D is best known for its, its role in immunity. It's an essential fat soluble vitamin, and it helps also regulate calcium levels, which can strengthen the bones and the joints and help you build muscle. Now, research also tells us that vitamin D plays an essential role in other tissues, including skeletal muscle. So not just with building muscle, but it helps keep the integrity of our entire system intact. And more studies, they show this association between vitamin D and levels in the body and then strength. So if we have an increase in vitamin D, we see that essentially athletes who are intaking with optimal levels of vitamin D, they're performing better, they're having less incidences of injury and they're getting stronger. Put that together and you start to see when I talk about everything is everything, if you're not getting injured and you're stronger, you're able to lift heavier weights, you're able to put more stimulus on the muscle, you're gonna build more muscle. Now. The reason that it's so important to talk about vitamin D, and you're probably thinking, dude, I get enough vitamin D, right? Like I'm eating well, I'm taking a multivitamin. It's important to note that vitamin D is one of the most deficient. People are most deficient in vitamin D than almost anything else on the planet. Research suggests that individuals, if you're less than 65 years of age, which is probably the majority of people listening right now, if you're under 65 years of age and you are not living in Fiji or you're not living in Florida and getting sun 24-7, you should be getting at least 50, five zero micrograms of vitamin D daily. If you're an athlete training multiple times a day or you know working out more than just like activities of daily living, 60 micrograms is gonna be optimal for you. So under 65, get 50 micrograms daily. If you're under 65 and training pretty intensely or have some muscle building goals that you've got in mind, 60 micrograms daily. Vitamin D, vitamin D is very, very important. The next one I'm gonna talk about is zinc. Zinc is an essential mineral and it helps build muscle because it's involved in so many biological functions, which also include immunity and muscle growth. When we're talking about skeletal muscle, zinc plays a major role in myogenesis. And myogenesis is just a scientific term for forming new muscle tissue. It also affects acetylcholine and acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter and neurotransmitter that has a particular role in muscle contraction, as well as the mind-muscle connection. So what we wanna take away from that is, if we are talking about a neurotransmitter and effective messaging from the brain to the muscle, from the muscle to the brain, the more effective and efficient that is, the better it works, the better chance we have to actually signal the muscle to build, to repair itself back better than it was before. 
build better muscle. So we're not only building more muscle, but we're building back a stronger, more efficient muscle as well. So that's where zinc comes in. It plays a key role in muscle building. Also in that it, it helps with testosterone production and management, insulin like growth factor one, and that is a hormone that supports muscle growth. We'll probably talk about that in a few upcoming episodes. IGF-1 is what the acronym is, IGF-1, insulin growth factor one. Now, deficiency in zinc, probably won't see them right at first. This is something that can take place over time, kind of like how lethargy, you get tired and you don't just get tired like one day, it kind of just sticks around and you can't get rid of it. So deficiencies of zinc can impair performance, impairs long-term recovery, can lead to adrenal fatigue. You definitely won't grow as great and dense of muscle as you want to. Probably the easiest way besides a multivitamin to get zinc is red meat, poultry, and seafood. So if you happen to be a vegan or a vegetarian, look at these options. Look at beans, chickpeas, lentils, walnuts, lots of seeds and nuts will, have, will be high in zinc. If you are supplementing daily, you should look at 15 milligrams if you're a man and 10 milligrams if you're a woman. So zinc, very, very important. Now, the last thing I'm going to tell you about is calcium. You need to make sure you're getting enough calcium. Calcium is the unsung hero of your nutrition program and your ability to build muscle. We all know about calcium and its well-known role for preventing osteoporosis, building strong bones, having healthy teeth, but it really affects your ability to build strong muscle. And here's how. So electrolytes, calcium is an ion. It is an electrolyte and it plays an important role in muscle contraction. So you've got actin and you've got myosin. These are muscle, these are proteins in the muscle that have to do with contraction. And these calcium ions, they bind to the actin filament, which exposes the binding site for myosin head to bind and then you stimulate the muscle contraction. So if you do not have calcium, this actin and this myosin, you can't have the muscle contraction and the relaxation, the effective, you know, co-centric and eccentric motion that you want when you are performing your exercises. So this actually comes down to calcium is good for like on the job training. This is like the actual muscle contraction, all the work that you do, that work that you feel, like think of a bicep curl, really, really at the end of that range of motion and at the end, if you don't have calcium, you can't contract and relax your muscle appropriately. And then not only that, but you can have twitching spasms in your nerves and your muscles, which isn't good at all when you're working out. The recommended daily allowance for calcium for both men and women is 1,000 milligrams a day or one gram. 1,000 milligrams is one gram, however you want to put it. And you get that from daily food sources that you're very familiar with. Any dairy product like milk, yogurt, cheese, veggies like kale, cabbage, broccoli, those are very, very high in calcium. Here's the good news. If you're already taking a whey protein shake to get your protein needs, because whey is derived from milk, you're also going to get your calcium needs as well. So the note here, athletes, is get a quality protein shake in that can not only fulfill your protein needs, but ensure you're getting adequate calcium as well. So here's the gist. Here's the gist of episode number 53. Consuming enough protein, we know that is paramount to your success and ability to build muscle. If you want to see results in building muscle, get your protein macros in. Side note, if you don't know what your protein macros are, email me, I can help you with that. But in addition to protein, we also now know that there are four very important nutrients that play a secondary role in affecting your muscle building results because everything is everything. We've got creatine, we've got vitamin D, we've got zinc, and we've got calcium. And to maximize your progress and build muscle faster, there's no way around it. You have to supplement with a sufficient amounts of these vitamins and minerals, particularly creatine, zinc, vitamin D, and calcium, in addition to the protein, to get to your end result, to get to the goal you want. So there you have it. You know about protein, you know about creatine, vitamin D, zinc, and calcium. And remember, if you want more information on creatine, like a deep dive into the science of it, and I know I mentioned a little bit about ATP and, and phosphocreatine and phosphates and all that stuff. If you want more information on that, head over to episode number 16, because I talk about creatine a lot and how it is basically the cheat code for a lot of uh, results that you want on your fitness journey. But in the meantime, building massive muscle doesn't just include your nutrition. You gotta have a legit training program and a program specifically designed with the science of building muscle in mind. And that's what episode 52 was about. It's the 50-60 method. The 50-60 method is all about the three very most important specific principles of building muscle. And I'm not talking about nutrition here. I'm talking about like the actual work that you do in the gym. There are principles that you need to apply in your training if you want to build the most muscle. Like if you're going into your gym workout and you're like, I want to grow, I want the gains. It's these three principles that you need to know about. It's a total number of reps, the rest time in between the sets that you do, 
and then the time under tension or tempo training. Now, I didn't invent any of these principles, but what I did is I put them together in the first time. I created the 50-60 method, and the awesome news is I'm giving it away for free. If you didn't check out episode number 52, now's another great reason to go back and check it out. Not only you'll get the free training program, but you're also going to get that gift that I promised at the end of the episode so you can save some money on your RedHNutrition.com subs. So go listen to episode number 52, but if you just want the program, if you don't need to hear my whole spiel about the three principles in depth, just go to the 5060method.com, the 5060method.com. You can get that program for free. You can put everything together. You can make sure you get your protein, your nutrition, and you've got a training program now that is specifically designed to help you get the gains that you want. So athletes, thanks again. Thanks again for joining me for episode number 53. I am so looking forward to the next year of episodes. If you have any ideas, have any questions, you can always email me, katie at coachkatiedanger.com. If you want a complete multivitamin that can help you get the calcium, the zinc, and the vitamin D that you want, I highly suggest you check out reddishnutrition.com, the Factor 10 multivitamin. It has 63 micrograms of vitamin D. It's got 20 milligrams of zinc. You can get calcium from our Yes Whey protein, the grass-fed, delicious, easy-mixing protein. And then we also have a pure sport creatine, which has five milligrams per scoop. So the whole thing, listen to episode number 52, get your gift at the end, go to redhnutrition.com, load up on your protein, load up on the creatine, grab a bottle of factor 10 multivitamin, then get the 5060 method training program. And you've got yourself the complete picture for building the best muscle. Cause guess what? Show muscles mean something too. And show muscles often mean go muscle. So if you've got muscle, you know, you can use it functionally. And we've also got uh, we've also got swimsuit season coming up. So there's really never been a better time to really look into how can I build the best muscle and burn the most fat so I can get ready for beach season coming up. So I hope you feel a little bit more smarter. I hope you feel a little bit more confident about your training and nutrition. I'm giving you all the pieces. If you're ready, all you got to do is put them together, the training program, the supplements, everything. You've got it. You've got the knowledge. You know where to go to get everything. If you have any questions, email me katie at coachkatiedanger.com. And put this info to good use. Don't leave anything on the table. 1% means something and everything is everything. Use this information. You are worth it. You're worth your goals. Don't stop training hard. And until next week, athletes, this is Coach Katie D. Over and out. This is the podcastfactory.com.